Welcome to the X Corner. I'm here to add a little mutation to the superhero crew. I'll be covering the X Comics for the week of April 11th, 2018. This week we have five comics Domino number one, Exiles number one, Old Man Logan number 38, X Men Blue number 25, and X Men Red number three. There'll be spoilers, yeah, of course. We'll start with Domino number one. The writer is Gail Simone and the penciler is David Baldion. This comic begins with a full page of a Domino-faced dog, and the rest of the comic fills in how Pip came into Domino's life. We flash back to Domino on a mission with Outlaw and Diamondback. They're going to save some loggers in a forest from Russians. It turns out to be a trap, and they have to fight their way out, as Domino explains her luck powers. After the mission, the three head back to Domino's apartment, with the villain whom they befriended, and she's surprised by a birthday party. Domino is having fun and getting emotional as Dazzler plays the party, but soon is overwhelmed by bad memories of her childhood. She retreats to her bedroom and is given a dog by Diamondback as a birthday present. She then goes to bed as the party continues, but is interrupted by an old man and his nurse who show up in her room. The man says they have the same birthday, and six is nurse on Domino. The nurse is named Topaz, and she's the one who set up Domino earlier, and she seemed intent on finishing the job. Domino tries to get her luck power to kick in to save her, but they seem to have forsaken her, and she has tossed out her pentose window. Gail Simone's writing is a tour de force, as she turns 20-something short pages into an epic tale. It's rare nowadays you feel like you get a whole full comic, with all the splash pages and gratuitous action, but the creators here did an amazing job. Some of the little scenes and panels in this comic are priceless. Outlaw giving Domino a fastball special, which she hates due to the costume write-up, Deadpool booking the music for the party, and trying to get an air supply cover band, but only being able to get the actual air supply, so instead he just gets Dazzler. And also Outlaw making fun of Domino's choice in ex-boyfriends, as they're all huge, including Colossus, whom she jabs for being engaged to Kitty. Also I have to shout out David Baldian, never heard of him, but he's banged out a beautiful and nuanced take on a bunch of characters, giving them all life and, uh, well, character. It has an Amanda Connors feel from her Harley Quinn series, which I loved, at least when it started, before it was commercialized. I never cared about or for Domino, but once again, some great writing and art turned me around. So far. I cannot wait to see where this one goes. Rating, 8.5 out of 10. Then there's Exiles number 1. The writer is Saladin Ahmed, and the penciler is Javier Rodriguez. The Exiles were a dimension-hopping team from the 90s who fixed mistakes in their time streams. Led by Blink from the Age of Apocalypse, they had a series of successful books, and now we get a nostalgia-driven reboot. Blink is set off again to recruit a team of heroes across dimensions to stop a force from erasing realities. She first meets up with Miss Marvel from an apocalyptic future, where she leads a band of Inhumans as Khan. Blink jumps in just as reality is being destroyed to bring her on the team. Next we meet Iron Lad from an alternate reality where he didn't become a hero with the young Avengers. His world too is being erased and we meet the culprit, the severed undead head of Galactus now known as the Time Eater. Once again, I was never a fan of the Exiles. They were after my reading heyday, and I never went back to check them out. I love the idea, and probably will, but this comic does nothing to encourage me to do so. Once again, we have Miss Marvel from the future, but unlike in Old Man Laura, this one is a grizzled Mad Max reject. The writing here is just not good. Coming off of Domino, with a world-class writer, this issue feels really, really bad. The story is so decompressed, we only get two members of the Exiles joining Blink so far. There are three pages of Nick Fury's Sandman describing the concept of the book, and once again we get splash page itis on every other page. This, so far, is the epitome of a bad Marvel comic. It is derivative to a point where I think it's being done on purpose, but so sloppily, not to be clever. The art is passable, but nothing special. I'll give it one more issue, but only because we get a tease of Wolverine from the X-Babies joining, but I have a feeling that even he won't redeem this train wreck. Rating, 4 out of 10. Then we have Old Man Logan 38, the writer is Ed Brisson, and the penciler is Delabor Intelligic. We get the conclusion to the Logan vs. Kingpin story, and all I can say is to quote Brainy Smurf, I was right, I was right, but we'll get to that. So Bullseye gets the drive from the reporter writer, and Logan is hot on his tail. This time, Logan gets the better of Bullseye somehow, even with one less eye and being deaf in one ear. Logan then drags Bullseye to Kingpin to get some answers. And what were those answers, I hear you asking? Yep, the drive had pictures of Kingpin and his dead wife on it. Logan still threatens to kill Kingpin anyway, but Kingpin counters that he'll have Sarah killed or worse, 
so Logan leaves. It says to be continued at the end though, which disturbs me. No need to draw it out anymore, thanks. The art in this installment seems rushed, and there were literally panels where I had to assume what was going on in the bullseye fight. Also, couldn't Logan just kill Kingpin and make sure the writer was safe? Seems like that would have solved quite a few issues. Plus, the writer shot about a thousand shots at Bullseye, point blank, and missed every one. I wonder if he got some of Domino's luck powers, because that seems impossible. This arc wasn't good, but I do like how Logan keeps getting more and more injured, not healing. His scarred milky eye is an evocative image. I do hope we get back on the good track from earlier in this run, soon. Rating 6 out of 10. Then there's X-Men Blue 25. The writers Cullen Bunn, the pencilers Mike Perkins, and Jorge Molina. Magneto is meeting with the bad guys to try and convince at least Havoc and Emma to think about what they're doing. Negotiations break down, and Megs is about to finish them off when Emma psychically powers up Havoc to knock Magneto down. He only barely escapes, and the bad guys send Sentinels off to drop the Mother Vine on cities all over the world. Meanwhile, back in the Mandrapur X Mansion, Polaris is dealing with the aftermath of her possession and total destruction of the Raksha. They live, but barely. Jimmy and Bloodstorm bring in Zorn to help heal them. Fire and Dakin show up, and gang's all here. Magneto makes it back and is introduced to the new X-Men Blue, with nifty matching outfits even. Then we get a short story of the young time-displaced X-Men floating in space. They've just fought the poisons, and they believe Jean is dead. Just then a meteor shower blasts holes in the X-Plane, and they are about to die, so Danger puts them in a fake world to calm them and ease their passing. Jean is there, so Cyclops is willing to accept it, but Hank knows it can't be true, and makes Danger stop. Scott gets to say goodbye to Jean before they're back on the ship, and Hank gets to work repairing it. X-Men Blue continues to give me what I want of the X-Men, high stakes with a team of ragtag mutants. This reminds me of the old X-Factor run where Havoc and Polaris took over from the original X-Men, and I love it. Ignito suiting up was a good use of the full page. That guy has more costumes than anyone I know. I liked how Emma is still unsure, and I hope she'll convince or even revert Havoc back to good by the end of this arc. Dakin making fun of Nightshade's moping was funny, as he said, Mopey teenagers on the steps, we must be out of school for mutants. The whole end sequence with the young X-Men was weird though. It was so tacked on. I guess it gives a bridge for people missing them to get into the Venomized series, but there wasn't even a find out what happens next at the end to tell them to go there. Oh well, I did like it said end at the end, so maybe we can keep this new X-Men blue team. Rating, 8 out of 10. Lastly, we have X-Men Red number 3. The writer's Tom Taylor and the penciler's Mahmoud Asrar. This comic starts with Cassandra Nova being the creepiest I've ever seen her. She walks right into the X-Mansion and no one can see her. Well, no one except one small mutant child, whose neck she unceremoniously snaps. She sneaks into a room with a vial and it tells the sleeper to protect Wakanda. Now, I think the vial must be the mutant growth hormone because it looks just like what Magneto used in that comic. We then go to the X-Men Red team fighting a sentinel as they try to rescue Trinary. Sentinel blasts Gabby, who Trinary assumes is dead, so she lashes out at the Sentinel and makes it sit. She pretty much domesticated it. The three people in the crowd, who Jean couldn't knock out last issue, have the same sort of programming running in their brains, according to Trinary, as the Sentinel. She also says that there is a worldwide hate against mutants propaganda assault going on online. The scene is getting hot though, so the team escapes on the back of the Sentinel, heading back to Wakanda. Then we go to an anti-mutant protest, where a young girl with wings confronts the protesters. She is about to be beaten, but Gambit jumps in to kinetically disperse the crowd. One man, though, has a gun. Gambit knocks him out, but not before he guns down the young mutant girl. The X-Men Red Team make it back to Wakanda, but there's an issue. A huge storm is brewing, and at the center of it is the titular storm. She was the one Cassandra Nova attacked at the mansion. All she says is protect Wakanda before she zaps the Sentinel out of the sky, along with the X-Men. A solid issue, and especially makes me like Trinary even more. Her powers are interesting, and the way she stood up for Gabby was cool. It's nice to see a new character well-written enough that I instantly don't hate them. The art is getting much better, also. No longer is Jean changing looks every panel. Cassandra Nova is really evil, and makes for an interesting villain for Jean. When she snapped that little kid's neck, I literally gasped. It's not going to be a head-to-head -head fight, which is cool. It's more of a chess match. Gabby is awesome, as always, even when putting her own intestines back in. The gamut stuff in the middle was a little on the nose with the tiki torches, but no less shocking when the girl died. Overall, I'm liking this comic more and more. Strangely not for the X team, but for the story and where it's going. Glad it gives me something to chew on. Rating 7.5 out of 10. Not a bad week, at least for the main X books in Domino. 
I knew I wouldn't enjoy that old man Logan after the last issue, but it was Exiles that really bummed me out. So not good. Hopefully the writer gets all the bad stuff out early, and it gets better. Next week I'll be back with a light one, but I'll make sure I wax lyrical about the good old days to fill in the space. Later!